Hey, welcome to Bowling for Fruit Q&A. I think this is episode five. I'm your, well, I don't want to call myself a host, but I'm Nicole Roche, and this is a Q&A, Bowling for Fruit. Remsen and I get together and eat our fruit and answer questions. Q&A, hey, Remsen. Um, so, yeah, hey, guys, come on in, come on in, y'all, come on in. Uh, try, I mean, um, Remsen, go ahead and request to join. Do y'all have your fruit ready? Y'all have your questions ready? Come on in, y'all. It's Q&A time. I want you guys to put your questions in the question box so it's easier for me to find as opposed to the chat. Come on in. Remsen, go ahead and request to join. Or should I request you? Let me request him. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Hope you guys are having a lovely day. It's a beautiful day in Zamunda. Hi, my friend. What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing quite well, thank you. I'm rushing. Oh, yeah, look at that. You got all of them. I you got, got all the oranges. I got ten, eight tangerines. And guess what? This is my lunch. Oh, okay. I'm having... I'm, do, I'm, I'm in between fruit, fruit bowls. In between fruit bowls. I'm in between fruit bowls. So basically what I do is I have my smoothie bowl in the morning, and then I'll eat a melon um, afterwards, and then I'll have like a cup of nuts, and then another fruit bowl, and then another cup of nuts. So oh, I like that. I've got my almonds here. I yeah, like that yeah. break. I like your breakdown. Yeah, so you're so eating almonds? Huh? You're, you're eating, you said you're eating almonds right now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, today's nuts are going to be almonds, and then I'm going to finish off the night with um, uh, pe roasted peanuts. Oh. <laughs> now, you consume, I know when you're doing, because you're, you're kind of doing like really high raw right now, right? I'm kind of, I'm pretty I mean, much fully raw at this point. I mean, you're already high raw, but it sounds like you're doing like real, real raw today. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much fully raw. I mean, I've been like this for... I think the last time I ate cooked food was maybe last Saturday. Really? Either last Saturday or last Friday, one of those. Yeah. So you're just you're just basically chomping on fruit and nuts. Yeah, yeah, essentially. Yeah. Well, now, yeah. how does that work with you know? Because you'd be getting it in on the nuts now, and and the nuts are fattening. Is that causing actually any weight gain or anything for you? That's not actually. That's not really true. Um, What's not true? So you don't, nuts are not necessarily fattening. So there's like 25 to 30% of the dietary fat from nuts that you don't even absorb. Uh, because, oh, yeah? Because of the fiber and how the digestive process breaks down. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. You know, now, nut butter, you may get a higher absorption of fat. But when it comes to like, for example, roasted nuts or something like that, mm -hmm. it's like roasted Roughly twenty five percent of the dietary fat you don't get. Hmm. Interesting. So generally speaking, when it comes to the nuts, you can have a cup of nuts where, like, let's say a cup of almonds, on paper, it could be six hundred and it can have a val a caloric value of six hundred and eighty uh, calories in total, but you got to subtract twenty five percent from that because you're not because you're not absorbing twenty five percent. Right. Exactly. So oh, I'm about to go ham. Think. I'm about to go ham. I'm gonna be like, Rimsey said, twenty five percent of this ain't gonna absorb anyway. So I'm about to eat three cups. Uh, nah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Okay. Well, it's good to see you, Rimsey. It's been a few weeks. You've been yeah. doing all right. You. I think it's only been like what one or two. Two weeks. Weeks, but we yeah, did. Yeah. It was two weeks and two days ago because we did it on. We were doing it on Fridays. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, we yeah. have some questions in the box. Thank you guys for putting your questions in the box. And everyone else who's joining, if you have questions, put them in the question box so it's just easier for me to find. I'm Remsen. I mean, <laughs> you're Remsen. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm tripping. I'm Nicole, Nicole Roche. This is Remsen. We do a QA called Bowling for Fruit bi-weekly. We chomp on our fruit today. Rinsen is 
bending the rules and eating nuts. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Actually, we don't have to be confined to just eating fruit. We can eat whatever we want, as long as it's plant-based. Hey, you know, sometimes with the schedule, it's how it shakes out. Mm-hmm. You know. Exactly. Um, so I'm actually supposed to be having a fruit bowl, but got 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 the, the schedule um got a little mixed up today. It's all good. Yeah. Yes, he's eating nuts, Brenda. He's eating nuts. You're eating almonds, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's eating almonds. I'm eating tangerines, and this is actually my lunch today. And I'm having a very late lunch. It's two thirty something my time. Um, and this is just like hecka easy. Like when I'm lazy and I really don't feel like eating, but I'm hungry, I will, excuse me, I will grab like 10, depending on the size, 10 tangerines. If they're small, I might do 12 or something. And I will just eat this for a meal. Basically I'm the whole lazy. bag. Yeah, I'm lazy sometimes. And, <laughs> you know, it, or I'll do like a, a big, big bowl of watermelon. And, and I get really nice and satisfied on that. Okay, question, question. Penny, are you still here? AKA Realtor for Real. She said, do you eat pecans and what do you think about them? I generally don't eat pecans very often, but they are good. Though. Yeah, me it's neither. Good, you know, that's, I, I mean, like, usually the only time I really eat them, you know, you go to restaurants and you order salads. Mm -hmm. Uh, they they often have pecans on their salad. That's like the only time I never buy them for my home. That's interesting. I never really tripped off of that. Yeah. I um, tend to eat cashews, almonds, peanuts, pretty much, and then and like chia seeds and and flax seeds. Crushed pecans are good in smoothie bowls, though. Oh, on the top. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That yeah. sounds nice. So you could eat okay. the crushed pecans or sunflower seed kernels mm -hmm. or crushed walnuts <laughs> or oh, kernels <laughs> you know you make me laugh when you say that i don't know why no, um, kernels. kernels something about that word makes me laugh the real hey girl the real sheree shield she always be coming through the lies what's up girl she said hi guys my question is what foods sorry you guys for the smacking no i'm not um my question is <laughs> what foods is, <laughs> what foods is what starting over what foods and supplements can i take to lower blood pressure and ldl cholesterol i would say the supplement with vitamin d um as far as foods are concerned, um, pretty much any fruit is going to lower your blood pressure. Um, but your blood pressure is an indication of other health issues. So, like, hmm. the goal isn't really necessarily to lower high blood pressure. The goal is to improve your metabolism and, and, and engage in better stress management overall. So, for example, High blood pressure can be an indicator of um, kidney issues, liver issues, um, pancreatic issues, lack stress. of sleep quality, stress. insulin. Well, all of those things are stress, right? I yeah. mean, if you have a kidney issues, that's going to be a stressor. Mm -hmm. Poor sleep quality as a result of poor brain chemistry, that's going to be a stressor. Fatty yeah. liver disease, insulin resistance, that's going to be a stressor. Um, thyroid issues pituitary issues that's going to be a stressor right um and in um an imbalance in oxygen absorption and o2 concentrations in your lungs that's going to be a stressor resulting in things like sleep apnea and stuff like that mouth breathing right um so there's a lot of things you can do for example there's one trick in particular that's very very good to practice throughout the day what? is deliberate breathing. So breathe, practicing breathing into your nose. So it's good to pay attention to how you breathe. Um, if you're doing a lot of mouth breathing, that's a, the mouth breathing is going to throw off your O2 concentrations in your, in your, in your lungs and can lead to poor oxygenation. Right? So practicing breathing into your nose deep, real deep and breathe into your belly and then out um, through your mouth and engaging it 
and breathing exercises, right? Three breaths in and doing that over a period of five minutes, especially doing that be right before bed. <laughs> right? Um, that improves your blood pressure and it also helps to reverse sleep apnea. Um, mm. Also, so the reason why you can have a diet of just straight up nuts and fruit um, is because you're going to be getting a lot of the B vitamins that are necessary uh, to improve blood oxygen, insulin sensitivity, um, glucose and fat metabolism, serotonin production, melatonin production, dopamine, um, all these different, you know, hormones and things like that. You're going to be hydrated, getting more potassium, magnesium, manganese, um, all, all these different uh, macro minerals and even trace minerals mm -hmm. uh, from the mm -hmm. fruits as well as with your nuts and things like that. Um, that helps to regulate your blood pressure. So when it comes to blood pressure, you got to have more of a full spectrum approach to yeah. get to the root of the issue. Blood pressure is an indicator of an underlying problem, right? It's kind of like if you get a cold, your goal isn't like, like I just don't want to have a stuffy nose. Your goal is to get rid of the cold. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, that, that's an example of that. No, it's a trick. I've been eating this way for 12 and a half years, right? Uh -huh. Plant-based. Plant-based. And never, never, ever had high cholesterol in my life. Not even when I used to eat meat. About Three months ago, I think I might have told you this, I don't know. Uh, three months ago or so, I went to get my blood work done, and everything came back normal, as always, except I had high cholesterol, and I was tripping out big time, like, what in the world? I've never had high cholesterol. What were your vitamin, I was like, vitamin D level? What's your vitamin D? My vitamin D was good. But no, this is, I'm, I'm wondering, listen, watch this. I, so, okay, I have a bad habit. I drink coffee. And I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress. Anyway, I drank coffee, you know, with my non-dairy creamer right before I took the test. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, is it that? Because I was researching to see what kind of, what things can cause high blood pressure. And I was drinking like coffee might, might, might be able to affect it, sugar, fat, certain things. Because everything I eat does not have cholesterol in it. But that doesn't mean you can't get high cholesterol. Anyway, so I went three, four days without drinking any coffee or creamer, especially not right before I took the test. And I went back and took it again, but then it was back to normal. So I'm like, was it the coffee creamer that affected my... Saturated. If there's a lot of saturated fat in the coffee creamer, yeah. Yeah, it was weird. It, and, and like I said, I went without it for four days, went back, take, took the test because I was not going to accept that I had high cholesterol. I was like, I rebuked that. What was <laughs> and then it was back score? to normal. Dang, now I forgot. Was it high LDL or HDL? Which one is the one that shouldn't be high? The LDL. I guess it was the ADL, LDL that was high, and then the HDL is the one that the good cholesterol, right? Mm -hmm. What's what was the LDL score? Do you know? Like mm, I did, I did know. I feel was it two thirty nine. No shot. That would be your total cholesterol, maybe, not your LDL. No shot. No, it was like... Dang. No shot. There's no way your LDL is 239. <laughs> it was. I've seen people with extraordinarily high cholesterol. I have never seen somebody with an LDL score of 239. No shot. I'm Absolutely. telling you, it was no like... Shot. It was no like 200. It was like 200 something. But it was... I really think it was the coffee and the creamer right before taking the test. No shot. <laughs> As, that was your total cholesterol. That was your total cholesterol score. That was not LDL. No shot. Dang it. I wish I still had the screenshots. No. no. But it was a trip because I'm like, there's nothing that I eat that has cholesterol in it. But guess what? It doesn't have to be what, you, what you're eating. Like certain things can just contribute to it, but anyway, so yeah, I thought that was usually good. either. So it's usually going to be lack of vitamin D or excess saturated fat in the diet. Because I eat a lot of peanut butter oh. and nuts and stuff. 
What? But, there you but, go. But, no, no, and no. the coffee you, creamer. You know, how much saturated fat is in the coffee creamer? It's, it's like four. It was like four and a half grams per serving, and I had three. But here's the deal, Rimson. So listen, I've been eating plant based for twelve and a half years, and my diet has been consistent with those same fats. The only difference is for that test was that coffee creamer and the coffee right before taking it. Uh -huh. So I think it might have been the creamer. You and the numbers, yeah. Mm -hmm. It just affected because my diet has been the same for 12 and a half years. I never had high cholesterol. And I eat nuts and peanut butter all the time. I mean, you know, and it, I, I try to stick to um, serving size, but I think it was just that. And because, like I said, I went without it for four days, went back, took it, and it was it was back to normal. Yo, coffee creamer, coffee. Absolutely not. No. Mm -mm. Absolutely not. No. Not what? You ain't got, got no business drinking that. I know. Mm -mm. No, Remsen, no. man, I'm not. And, you know, I don't drink it for the reasons a lot of people drink it. They drink it because they need it, because they need to function, because they're tired. I just like the way it tastes with the doggone um, creamer. But because I, I was drinking it for taste all these years, for six years now, off and on, my body has become addicted to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know I need to let it go, though. Oh, Cam Camelia. Hey, girl. What's up, girl? She said, if, instead of eating peanut butter, you should eat almond butter indefinitely. I, I switch up. When I say peanut butter, that kind of, that's me saying you all the nut because... So instead of doing nut butter, you do the whole nuts. There's a very big difference between eating peanuts and eating peanut butter. When you yeah, but if I process have, it into nut butter, you absorb all the fat. Yeah, yeah but if I want to have peanut butter and apples, I can't dip an apple in peanuts. I got to have butter, peanut butter I mean, or almond a, butter. That's what you want to do, but if you want to maximize your health results, that's the play. Why are you being difficult? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I'm just telling you how it is. Um, hey, everybody, um, thank you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Another thing you could do too is you can get plant-based milk, and you can soak you can soak the nuts in the plant-based milk, and then blend it up until it gets like a smooth consistency, and use that as a base to make smoothies. Mhm. Mm so you don't really do butter. You guys, make sure you ask them. So this is a Q and A. So I want to see those questions in the question box. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, so you don't really do butters, nut butters too much. You just do whole nuts. <laughs> I don't have any nut butter in the house. Really? Mm -hmm. You're so disciplined. I love it. Like you, you stop eating around what four, four thirty. No. You know, no. you don't eat. You don't eat. Junk I stop eating around like seven or so. Seven p.m. Mm -hmm. So it it changes with the season, right? Because like uh, about. A month ago, you were stopping around four or something. Is it because it's summertime yeah, now? So ideally, yeah. Um, but I, I change up depending on what my strategy is. Yeah. So now, now I'm kind of I'm getting out of the alternate day fasting. You're getting out of it. Uh huh. So generally speaking, I try to stop eating four to six hours before bed. Right. Yeah. So. I'll either stop eating by like four or five or seven at the latest. Um, okay. And then I'll start eating like an hour after I wake up or so. That's generally what my schedule is, but I'm eating on a daily basis now and not doing the alternate day fasting. Yeah. Good. The interesting thing about the alternate day fasting is I drop body fat, but I didn't really lose weight. I didn't get smaller. Wait, you didn't get smaller? No. Just lost body fat. Well, I've had that's, actually that's this is a common thing because a lot of my a lot of my members when I'm coaching them, um, their 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 arms, shoulders, chest, back, all that type of stuff, those measurements will either stay the same or slightly increase, but the waist measurement will shrink like four to eight four to eight inches. So I had a guy, and within like two months, he's lost four inches off his waist that's what you want though you want to lose the inches and the fat 
Yeah. That's the important. He's been able to maintain his muscle mass, his strength, everything. Just, yeah. Just, it's like, it's like, and you know, he gave me his measurements and it's just the waist. Same thing with women that I coach. All, all the inches come off the waist, but the hips and whatnot stay the same. Yes, honey. Well, we don't want to leave. We don't want to lose our hips and booty. Yeah, yeah, you don't. You won't lose your. You won't lose none of that. You don't lose that. Mm -mm. Um. You might, you might lose a little bit of fat, right? Mm -hmm. Which is fine because you know, I mean you don't want to. You know you want to be able to rein in the moon butt. You want to be able to smooth things out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Tighten it up. You get too much fat up in there. You know you get a little. Uh, you get you get too many shapes, too much <laughs> too much texture. You said you, know? you didn't get smaller. Do you mean you didn't lose weight on the, the numbers on the scale? Because you did look you look leaner to me. So you do look leaner, smaller. yeah. But I didn't I didn't lose inches. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I was able to gain muscle and lose body, body fat simultaneously, even with the alternate day fasting. And that's what you want, you know, because. Mm -hmm. Some people be like, oh, I went on a water fast or I went on a fruit cleanse or I went on a juice cleanse and I lost 10 pounds in a week. That's just water. Uh -huh. You know, and yeah, I mean, it's not, not bad. Fat in a week. Yeah, it's not bad to lose water, but it's not, it's definitely not fat. You can't lose 10 pounds of fat in a week. But um, T Vegan said, um, and then I'm going to jump to the comments in the box. What are the benefits of alternate day fasting? Um, you improve insulin sensitivity, brain chemistry, <laughs> you save money, <laughs> <laughs> right. um, and you drop body fat. Yeah, if only I could do that. <laughs> Alternate day fasting, you will never <laughs> see me do that. Like, that takes some serious, like, I don't know. You could do a 24-hour we'll fast twice 20. a week. Huh? You can do a 24-hour fast twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's not my ministry, Remsen. <laughs> <laughs> that is not my ministry. Um, you just got to be disciplined, that's all. Yeah, yeah. No. I, I got to work on that. Okay, Educator Smalls, are you on here still? Says, are there any negative effects of green tea? Well, it has caffeine in it, and caffeine is... It's not good for you in general, which is why I need to stop drinking coffee, but it I ain't ready yet. Caffeine can be good for you, but it depends on the dosage. So like 100 <laughs> milligrams, 150 milligrams, it can be beneficial. When you start getting to like 250, 300, you have problems. Oh my God. I just lost my, what? Oh, okay. We're talking about caffeine. Okay. Oh, Green yeah. tea. Green tea, okay. Green tea like, is fine. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't seen any negative effects of green tea. Mm hmm No. Um, Camellia said, sorry, hold on. She said, hey, he's right, eating whole food. I don't eat peanut butter anymore, and I don't eat almond butter anymore. I just eat nuts. You go, That's right. girl. That's right. Well, I like, I like, and then when I make nice cream, like I blend my frozen fruit in my food processor. I always like to add a tablespoon of peanut butter just because it just adds this nice or almond butter, raw almond uh -huh. butter. And it just it just has a good nice texture. texture. And yeah, it tastes good. Texture, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, it I, tastes I, I feel you on that. Yeah. Um, any other questions, you guys? Put the questions in the question box. Let me scroll up here and see if I missed any. Put them in the question box, you guys. It just makes it so much easier for me to find. Um Camelia, what you laughing at? She did a laughing emoji. Southern Vegan Eats. Hey, girl. She said, I love the benefits of fasting. Yeah, I can do like, like I can do like a fasting until 12 sometimes. Well, no, I can't. <laughs> I used to be able to. I don't know why I can't do it anymore. Like, yeah, on a scale of one to five, how's your sleep quality? Once I go to sleep, I'm okay. Oh, how long does that take? It takes me about I can't say why <laughs> it takes me a while to go to sleep but it takes me probably about 45 minutes to an hour <laughs> she said I can't say why <laughs> what, what do you mean you can't or you won't say why <laughs> I won't 
All right, that's fine. It okay. takes me about 40 minutes to go to sleep, but then once I go to sleep, I'm okay. But I am a light sleeper, so. Um, but yeah, I, I get, I get, you know, about good seven, eight hours of sleep. And on the weekends, I get a lot more sleep because I sleep in. I got you. Okay. How yeah. to, how to gain on a vegan diet? Albert Marcus Six. I'm gonna call well, you my, out. Yeah, that's my thing too because. What? Um, <clears throat> I, I I have a very very good idea of how to gain muscle on on a raw vegan <laughs> diet. I've been able to successfully do that and get other people to do it. Before you answer that albert marcus six i'm gonna need you to put a profile picture on okay go ahead <laughs> <laughs> you the so the key to putting on muscle mass as a raw vegan okay is you got a carbo mm -hmm. so you got to be getting, you got to be getting at least 300 grams of carbs per day and, and wait before you go on and lot, a lot of people think you need to be staying away from the carbs no no um Three, you can be in between three, 500 grams of carbs a day, right? So like, for example, good habits is six bananas a day, one cantaloupe or honeydew uh, per day, um, and then have like an additional fruit bowl or two. It could be apples and grapes. It could be uh, tangerines, grapefruit and pears. It could be four kiwis, three cups of strawberries, that kind of thing. Right? Uh, um, acai bowls, right? So you can have an acai bowl a day, three smooths, three fruit bowls a day, and then about two cups of nuts per day, something like that. Two cups. Yeah, yeah two cups. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, because uh, you need the zinc, you need the copper, right? Uh, because those minerals, of course, you need the manganese and the magnesium and whatnot from the nuts, and that's needed for um, building a stronger uh, skeletal muscle structure, nervous system, all that type of stuff. So you need that for the strength, that mineral comp. Because a lot of people focus on protein. You get all the protein you want, but you need that zinc, right? Zinc and magnesium are the muscle building minerals. And then, of course, magnesium manganese and magnesium work together to to uh, rebuild and protect your tendons your ligaments as well as um, recover your nervous system and that's especially important for resistance training and strength training and things like that because your your nervous system takes longer to recover than your skeletal muscle does right uh, so the the nuts and seeds I'm a big fan of because of the zinc um, so from your diet, you know, you could be getting 16 to 20, 20 uh, <clears throat> milligrams of zinc, and that's generally good enough, 16 to 20. The official re recommendation for zinc is like 10 to 12 grams, but you can go a lot higher than that. And then, of course, supplementing with vitamin D. Vitamin D and zinc work together. That's really important for maximizing recovery. Um, and then even supplementing with zinc, like a zinc picolinate or something like that. Right. Um, and then, and of course, you know, as you increase your carbohydrate intake, it's very important to do it with the fruits because that has the um, the B vitamins, the B1 through 9 and B12 mm -hmm. uh, together to maximize uh, carbohydrate digestion and metabolism as well as fat metabolism and maintain your hormones. Right. So supplement. Supplementing with like B complex, B12, zinc, magnesium, crushing the fruit, and then having those two cups of nuts per day. <laughs> You'll definitely put it on. Yeah. I don't know why I'm laughing. Sorry. Two cups of nuts a day. Yeah. That's, right. that's a lot of nuts. Yeah. That's right. Because when I have nuts, I only, I literally only have the serving size. Um, stop eating and take the fake up off. What, Jonas? What are you saying? Stop e eating. You stop eating. This is called bowling for fruit. This is what we do. We eat our fruit and we eat our nuts and we talk and ask questions and answer questions. So if you don't like it, you know what you can do. Nah. Um, let's see. I saw something. 
Or maybe I mean, I'm generally speaking, though, I mean, generally speaking, a good recommendation is at least anywhere from 28 to 32 grams. Of zinc? No. Uh, 28 to 32 grams of nuts. Uh, per day. I don't know what that looks like. Four, four ounces. Four ounces. One cup. One cup. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look. I'm like, I, I don't know what that means. No. Okay. Camilla says, are there any foods for, are there any foods good for eye health as well as brain health? I'm really trying hard to be a raw vegan. Yeah. So, uh, bananas, grapefruit, cantaloupe, honeydew, butternut squash, uh, anything with the orange pigmentation, pretty much. And then, of course, uh, you've got your chia seeds, flax seeds, uh, hemp seeds, things of that nature, right? Yeah. All of the nuts with the with the ALA, <clears throat> omega-3 essential fatty acids. And as well as, I mean, the omega-6s and whatnot, too, from the polyunsaturated fats. Mm -hmm. uh, all those are necessary for maintaining your eye health, right? So vitamin A and E are very important for eye health, as well as um, uh, ALA. LA? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, the alpha linoleic acids, the alpha lipoic acids, you know, those, those mm. things. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Thank you so much, Remington. Maria Elizabeth said, hi, guys. What's your opinion on gaining, what's your opinion on gaining weight on too much fruit? I'm a raw vegan and I, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I'm gaining fat. I eat a lot of dates. Well, I mean, how many dates a day are you eating, right? I mean, I probably wouldn't recommend somebody just absolutely crush the dates like that because, um, so generally speaking, the foods that are not really, the, the fruits that are not really water rich, you probably shouldn't be pounding those like that. So like, you're not going to mm -hmm. get fed off of like the really water rich fruits, but like the dried fruits, right? So, you know, dried apricots, raisins, dates, things like that. No, that's a different story. That may really add up. Because the thing is, is that uh, things that are high in sugar and are dry, probably not really a good idea to pound those things like that. You know, you and you and I have a little a difference of opinion about the whole calorie thing. Yeah. Because my I'm answer to her, because my my answer to her would see, and I'm I'm only speaking from my experience. Uh huh. I know you. You, you say it's calories in versus calories out. That's not the thing. But I, from personal experience, feel that it is just based upon when I'm when I'm paying attention to how much I'm eating versus how much I'm burning. I can easily gain a couple pounds in a day or two. And of course, it's just like the water food weight. It doesn't turn into fat that quickly, uh -huh. but it does make me go up right but if i'm making sure that i burn more than i eat then that's when i see that the progress starts happening so uh -huh. my my answer to her would have been like you're eating fruit but you're eating more than you burn in fruit so you need to do the opposite but i know you have a difference of opinion on that um well i mean i don't necessarily have a difference of opinion i mean it, it is a fact that there is no such thing as calories in. I was, that's just that's just a categorical fact. I still don't, you don't understand eat calories. that. I don't understand huh? that. What do you mean? This, because, this tangerine because, has like, this is a big one. It has like 50 calories and I'm putting it in my mouth. Well, the thing <laughs> is, it doesn't have calories, right? Nothing has calories. Cal a calorie is a measure of heat energy, right? right? So you don't... You, you can't eat heat energy. It's not really how that works. Your body <laughs> will metabolize foods and produce thermogenic energy from the metabolic process. You see what I'm saying? So the the calorie burn happens as a result of metabolism. So like the calorie burn happens as a result of the metabolism. Right. So like for example, if you leave an orange in the fridge and you leave it in there for a month, and mm -hmm. it starts to decompose and break down and rot, right? 
how much thermogenic energy you think is 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 um that orange is in that, that orange is it going to be the same amount that would be in your body i have no idea this is this is this is what i mean right so for example is there thermogenic energy in wood dry wood is there thermogenic energy in the wood mm -hmm. no there's not <laughs> right because I'm the like, thing is, is that <laughs> you can use the wood to create thermogenic energy but you have to set it on fire to do that you have to burn it in order to do that right hmm. so basically what you need is you need a material to burn and then you need something to create a source of heat that can then consume that material you see what I I'm saying food is the is the material that you use to generate thermogenic energy, but the food in and of itself is not the source of the thermogenic energy. Does that make sense? I'm a little confused, but so uh, all right, I, I don't. I don't Wait, let me see how I can explain. Let me go on. Hold on, baby. Can you bring me a tangerine? I ran out and I'm still hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, for, so, so the thing is, is like, um, if you wanted to heat your house it's not enough to just put a bunch of firewood in your house you don't get an increase in heat in your home from just having more wood in your home does yeah. that make sense now if you set the wood on fire now you can raise the heat in your home and that heat energy that you get from setting a fire that is measured in caloric burn okay right you see what i'm saying so it's a measurement. You can't eat a measurement mm. because calories are not a measure of physical mass. It's a measurement of energy, of heat energy. So what's happening? See what I'm saying? Well, so what's happening then when I when I eat a certain amount of food more than I'm burning that day, and then the scale's going up, but then when I'm doing the opposite, it's going the scale's going down. Well, see, this this is the thing. So basically, you gain weight from whatever you don't burn. So for example, you put a ta if you swallow a bunch of tangerines and your body breaks down those tangerines and then takes the carbohydrates from the tangerines and just stores it inside your fat cells rather than burning it, well, now you're gonna gain weight. Mm. But it's not because it's an excess of calories it's an excess of glucose that's being stored inside your fat cells as glycogen it's an entirely different conversation mm. so what you're talking about is not a caloric deficit you're talking about a blood sugar deficit it's an entirely different oh, really? thing when your oh. blood sugar starts to drop then your body starts to metabolize fat in order to maintain your blood sugar right so as blood sugar starts to drop, your body then has to replace that blood sugar with fat for energy. So it has to swap fuel sources. Because the thing is that if your body doesn't do that, you then enter a state of hypoglycemia. So oh, yeah. in order to keep you out of a state of hypoglycemia, your body has to metabolize stored fat to prevent that process. Otherwise, your blood sugar will drop down to the floor and you'll pass out and go into a coma. Oh wow. Right? So yeah. maximal fat burn is in between blood sugar levels of 70 and 110. Once your blood sugar drops below 110, that's when you really start entering that blood that that um that fat burning zone. Right? So this yeah. is like the whole de idea behind the keto diet. Is it like oh, oh okay, so basically if I keep my blood sugar low, I'll be in a perpetual state of fat of fat burn. That's where that idea comes from. It's got nothing to do with calories. There's no such thing as a calorie deficit. You burn what you burn, right? Hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's kind of like, look, your body is going to burn the necessary calories it needs to in order to perpetuate itself regardless of what you eat. So even okay. if you're fasting, you're still, your body is still burning calories. Your body is still in a state of caloric burn regardless of whether you eat or not that's independent of food now mm -hmm. 
you can manipulate the rate at which your body engages in caloric burn, but that caloric burn is happening whether you eat or not. This is why there's no such thing as a caloric deficit. There can't be a caloric deficit, right? The caloric, the caloric burn is always going to be in correlation directly to the activity that your body is engaging in. So eating less is not going to put you in a caloric deficit. It's just going to reduce, it's just going to reduce your body's metabolic processes. Therefore, you just end up burning less calories. Right? So, so th this, this, okay. so this is the confusion around weight loss. It's because people think they can starve themselves into a healthy weight. That's not how it works. Because the thing is, well, what happens, I look, I work with a lot of diabetics. I have a lot of experience in reversing diabetes and getting people to lose weight and fixing metabolism. The reason why I have the success at getting people results, you know, the people who they're like, I've tried everything and had no results. It's like, yeah, because you don't understand weight loss. Mm. Everybody's been getting this wrong for some reason. And people yeah. should know better because you don't eat calories. That's an objective fact, period, right? And so, it, I mean, it's not up for debate. It's just not, right? Because it's not a solid physical piece of mass. It's not, right? If that were true, you'd be able to just bring firewood into your home and just the wood itself would increase the temperature in your home. It's not how it works. So um, creating a blood sugar deficit is the goal. The problem with a keto diet is you run into a storage problem. That's why it's not the magic bullet that people may think it is. So how do you store fat? And what, what's the problem with fat storage? Well, we know what the problem is with fat storage. First of all, it's harder to burn fat than it is to burn sugar. We know that for a fact, because literally the caloric burn necessary to burn through a gram of fat is more than double what it is to burn through a gram of carbohydrates. That's a fact, period. It's not even up for debate. So one gram of carbohydrates is four calories. One gram of fat is nine. This is math, right? I mean, it's an indisputable thing at this point, right? Um, so the analogy that I like to use is fat burns like wet wood and carbs burn like dry wood right? Your body prioritizes burning carbohydrates for energy energy because it's easier to burn. We know for a fact it's easier to burn. And we know that because this is why fasting is so difficult, even when you got 30 plus percent body fat. I mean, it's an undisputable fact, right? This is the reason why you get hungry and fasting can be very difficult because it's harder for your body to mobilize fat for energy period it's, i mean that's not debatable either right if it was just as easy to burn fat for energy then fasting would be extremely easy to do for anybody who's overweight right right um the only way somebody would disagree with me on that is if they were to say that it's not difficult at all to fast that anybody who's overweight or obese can fast easily mm -hmm. right because if that's true, then fasting wouldn't be difficult, period. Because the thing is that you run into this paradoxical thing. Both things can't be true simultaneously. They just can't. Right. Um, so there's a very big difference between trying to lose five or 15 pounds and between, you, you know, and then on the other side of the spectrum is having to lose 50, 70, or 100 pounds. These are two fundamentally different things. Right. You don't right. become... 50 pounds overweight because you just eat one you because you just eat you know one too many meals it's not how that works right so you run into a storage problem so going back to fat with the storage problem how does your body store fat generally speaking your body stores fat underneath your skin and in your liver the problem is if you store too much fat in your liver what do you end up with fatty liver disease you can also store fat inside muscle tissue the problem is because you, you need to keep your fat storage inside your lean mass at like 1%. Once you go over that, you, you develop something called lipotoxicity. This is a clinical diagnosis. This mm. is not even up for depending. Of, of, this is not up to opinion at this point. It's just a fact. Literally, lipotoxicity is insulin resistance. That is the thing that creates di type 2 diabetes. Period. Full stop. Right? So, because if 
you have too much fat lodged inside your muscle tissue or your lean mass period, those cells are not able to take in glucose to use for energy because it's somebody already filling that pocket, that parking spot, fat. And if fat is harder to burn, this is why you're tired all the time. So you can mm. be obese and have all this stored fat floating around your uh, latched onto your intestines and floating around your midsection and under your arms and on your butt cheeks and everything like that, just fat everywhere underneath your chin, the back of your neck and all this. You can't see your collarbones, fat mm. all up in your liver, on your heart, fat clogged up and everywhere. Ooh. All this excess energy. Mm. Mm. And then be tired all the time. Poor yeah. sleep, difficulty working out, you run down the block, you gasping for air, all this type of stuff. Really mm. out of shape. Everything is so damn difficult. Well, how is that if you have this massive surplus of energy? Because fat, that's not that easy to burn. Yeah. Right? So the problem is that you can accumulate fat way more than you accumulate, you know, fat from, let's say, carbohydrates. Because you eat fat, your body just stores it as fat. There's no conversion process. Carbohydrates, carbohydrates break down into glucose. That glucose gets stored as glycogen. And then if that glycogen isn't used, then it has to be converted into fat in your liver. There's a con wow. conversion process. There's extra steps. Yeah. It's not like, oh, fat just hits your bloodstream and immediately turns into fat. That, that is not at all how that works. Not at all how that works. Not even close. So then there's the issue of fat and your body uses excess fat to make extra fat cells. And your body has to make extra fat cells because if you just keep stuffing lipids into your pre-existing fat cells you now come up with other things you know what um like parkinson's alzheimer's neurodegenerative disease yeah. that's just excess fat storage in the brain it's literally people call it type 3 diabetes really yeah so you're storing too much fat in your brain and then eventually you develop insulin resistance of the brain oh my right? goodness yeah. Fix it, Jesus. People with insulin resistance and diabetes, they typically have much lower lean mass than people with a healthy metabolism because it is very difficult to build muscle and build bone density if you're insulin resistant. Because, because glucose uptake and glycogen storage in that lean tissue is compromised. I'm not talking about calories. This has nothing to do with calories. This is why we, we have to approach this conversation in a fundamentally different way. Yeah. Because you now have it at this point where, what is it? Either, I think it's like one in three or two in three adults are overweight or obese. The percentage is like really high. You have like a third of your population at least is overweight or obese. We have a massive problem. And so the thing is, if it was just, oh, just eat less calories, that's literally the one less Big Mac method. Because if <laughs> that's true, you don't need a diet plan. You could just go right to Chick-fil-A and you can just get a double bacon cheeseburger with extra onions and mushrooms and just not have the fries and just eat that for the day. And you eat one meal a day and just Chick-fil-A. Mm -mm. And then you'd be like, oh man, six pack abs, I feel great, man, my, I feel amazing. I've been on the Chick-fil-A diet. Now, if I was to call myself a nutritionist and advocate for the, for the Chick-fil-A diet, would people believe me or would they think I was a ridiculous person? We Maybe. know Crazy. people would look at me like I've lost my mind. Why? It, I thought it was just calories in, calories out. What's the difficulty? Hey, just eat less. Just one less Big Mac. Well, the problem hmm. isn't the fact that you're eating toxic foods. You're just eating too much toxic foods. Oh, just eat less of the toxic food. Oh, I'll go to Chick-fil-A every day. Oh, just, well, instead of getting two cheeseburgers, just get one and a half cheeseburgers. You'd look at me like I was ridiculous. Nobody would ever listen to me because we know that it's not as simple as calories in, calories out. We know that. Yeah. So when people say, oh, I disagree with you, no, you don't. You don't. Hey, don't right? say that to me. <laughs> no, but it's, but it's just true. Like, yeah, I'm going raw and uncut, right? Because we have to be serious about this conversation. For sure. But the thing is, no... It's easy to not really think about it in the terms that I just explained it in, because that's not culturally normally how we think about it. It's not. 
Nobody took, when's the last time? Nobody have ever heard of insulin resistance until they heard from me. What lipotoxicity, what's that? People have no idea because people don't talk about it. So now yeah. if you replace all the carbohydrates and if you just have extra fat in your diet, okay, well that fat has to be stored. So even if you're on a keto diet, you replace all the carbohydrates with fat, okay. Well, now you just make yourself more insulin resistant because you're storing more fat. You think all that fat that you consume you, is you're going to store it in your liver, and you're going to store it in your muscle tissue, and, you, and, and look, if you're not storing the fat in your muscle tissue, then where else are you storing it? Because the thing is that if you have to limit the amount of fat that you store in your lean tissue, well, then when you're on that keto diet, how do you avoid storing excess fat inside your lean tissue? It's not like you get to manually choose where your body stores the fat. So you can't have too much fat in your bloodstream because that'll drive up your blood pressure. You can't have too much fat stored viscerally on top of your organs because that creates disease. You can't store too much fat inside your muscle tissue because that creates lipotoxicity. So then where you store the fat? Oh, it's got to be underneath your skin and it's got to be in your liver. Okay, well, how long do you think you can get away with that before you just develop diabetes? So when people are like, mm. oh, you know, I've been on a keto diet for two years and I went and got a blood test and my blood, my fasting blood sugar level has been really good. It's been at a 90. My A1C came in at 4.8. It's amazing. I'm like, that's great. Eat a potato and watch what happens. If you really want to test how much progress you made, eat some carbs and watch what happens. Mm. Right? It's, it's like the equivalent of like, look, Your man can tell you he's faithful, he has the utmost respect for you, he would never step out on you. Oh yeah? Show her your phone. <laughs> Give me your passport, show her your phone. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why we gotta do all of that now? Well, I mean, we're doing a lot of talking. So you got the right methods, you legit, let's show it. Where's the receipts? Okay. Right? Right, so test the durability of it, right? So this is what I tell people on a keto diet. When they come off, they'll be like, well, I can't eat what I can't eat carbs because every time I eat rice or potato or I eat some fruit that's other than like strawberries or blueberries, I get all gassy and bloat. Yeah, because you destroyed your metabolism. Ooh. Like, look, butter, bacon, eggs, and sausage is not health foods, period. Mm -hmm. It's horrible for your body. It's not a health food, period. And this is not even up for debate. It's just not. Find me a cardiologist. Oh, you've got high blood pressure and heart disease. You got to get a triple bypass. You know what? Just have it. Just eat more red meat. Find me the cardiologist that says that. You know why they won't say that? It's malpractice. Hmm. They would never say that, especially not say it on camera. You got all of this scientific evidence and all of this type of stuff. The standard American already eats a lot of red meat and just meat in general in the first place. Hey, if that was true. Oh, you got cancer? Right. Eat more red meat. If that was true, why are they not saying that? Right. But your doctor's right. not telling you. Your doctor's not telling you, you know, avoid, you know what you got to do. Uh, you got to avoid eating apples and grapes and stuff like that if you got heart disease. They're never going to tell you right. that. It'd be right. negligent to tell you that. They get away. The most they'll say is try not to eat too much fruit if you're trying to lose weight because they focus on the sugar. Yeah. And that's a common thing, right? Because people want to act like, you know, um, eating fruit is the same thing as eating Fruit Loops. It's so a, not the same. Yeah, it's a fundamentally ridiculous thing to say. Right? Uh -huh. We know it's ridiculous. So when people say you, you gain too much weight, you you can you, it's hard to to lose weight eating fruit. Oh, really? Show me the people who have gained a ton of weight. Because they've been eating blueberries and strawberries and, and apples every day. Show me those people. <laughs> Pick out 100 people who are 50 pounds overweight and ask them, how many servings of fruit do they eat a day on average? And see what they tell you. And ask them what they all eat. They all eat the same things, and they mm -hmm. all end up in the same conditions. I'm telling you right now, you realize that most of them, if not all of them, either eat maybe only fruit once in a while, or they never eat fruit. Yeah, it's always like a side or something. Well, thank yeah. you, Renson. You broke all that down. Um, that was that was pretty intense, pretty deep, and uh, 
I wouldn't be able to, to explain what you just said to someone because it was a lot of information. <laughs> that was a lot. Um, I you know how you, you, you know you learn something when you're able to teach something, teach it to someone else. Now, I learned, but it was so much that I don't know if I would be able to repeat that. But that thank you for breaking all, all that down. There is a few people <laughs> that was that was a lot but it's needed it's needed and we need to hear it and we need to learn from you because that's why that's why i try to use analogies like firewood and stuff like that because it is a lot of people like lipotoxicity oh what, what the it's heck cool. that? just right over immediately no you can say uh, words i ain't never heard before no. <laughs> um, gluconeogenesis what is their whoosh right <laughs> yeah right yeah you guys um uh there's a couple of comments in the box and then after we touch those and then we'll probably bring it to a close so i'm gonna go ahead and get in this box real quick in the box. uh in the question box so let's do like you know a quick answer for each because there's like four questions as a diabetic is there a specific specific combination of fruit that won't raise blood sugar that's skittles 1108 that asks that question uh, so there's there's like a variety. So there aren't like particular foods. It's like it's more of a format issue. So first of all, if you're diabetic, the goal isn't to avoid blood sugar spikes. The goal is to gradually lower the trend of blood sugar spikes. So for example, I've had diabetics where they had a one C score of like twelve point three. You know, they eat a great their blood sugar skyrocket to like 210, 230, something crazy, right? Blood sugar being the 300s, all that. Mm -hmm. They wake up with their blood sugar at 185. They're like, I ain't even eat anything. My blood sugar's at 185. They get a blood sugar first, they get a blood sugar spike first thing in the morning without even eating anything. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah because avoid it. It's not possible or practical to avoid blood sugar spikes. What you have to do is improve your insulin sensitivity so you get a better trend line. So whereas your average blood sugar after meals at one point was 210, next week, then it's down to 180. Next week after that, it's like 160. Next week after that, it's around like 145, et cetera. And so you get these steps, this de-escalation trend down. And what you can do is you can curb blood sugar spikes. So for example, if you make a smoothie bowl, so blueberries, chia seeds, Ceylon cinnamon, these, mm. things like this will curb blood sugar spikes, right? So these things slow down the rate at which glucose enters your bloodstream, right? Then let's say you start off your morning and you have uh, vitamin D and chromium and you have B complex before your first meal. That B complex improves insulin sensitivity before meals that can curb blood sugar right if you have herbal teas whether it be moringa tea or ginger tea before meals that helps to curb blood sugar and improve insulin sensitivity right mm -hmm. um if you wake up first thing in the morning and you exercise before you eat let's say you go and you walk a couple miles and so you walk for the first 30 minutes or an hour of your day and then eat what happens is that the blood sugar you wake up with when you go for that walk that blood sugar will come down to a lower degree so that when you eat you don't get this compounding spike on top of the one that you woke up with right another thing would be to eat that the, you know a, 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 a quarter cup or a half cup or a whole cup of nuts in between the meals so let's say you eat the you know a half a cup or a cup of almonds right and then 30 minutes later you have your next meal the almonds will then curb the blood sugar spike that you normally would have gotten from eating the fruit right so there's a variety of different things that you can deploy so when i make a plan for somebody who's diabetic i deploy all of these different tactics to regulate blood sugar yeah now, now the interesting thing about the fruit is you might get a blood sugar spike but the blood sugar comes down a lot quicker than if you were to eat like a let's say a bunch of rice or bread or whatever, then your blood sugar just be high for the rest of the day. So let's say you eat a few cups of watermelon, your blood sugar peak up, but it comes down within the next hour, hour and a half. And then it comes down to a normal level. 
so it doesn't stay really elevated. And so what happens is you start, so what happens is you may start off with the spikes and then it starts to come down like this here. And you eat again, you get a little bit more of a spike, but it's less of a spike and it comes down because your spikes, the, your blood sugar spikes decline as you go through the day. Yeah. So let's say yeah. if you have a smaller eating window, your first spike could be a big one, maybe, some people, maybe not. You get your second meal, you get another spike, but it's not as big. You, your third meal is less of a spike than the previous one. So it trends down for the day. And if you finish eating around like four or six o'clock, you pretty much get normal, stable blood sugar for the rest of the day. You hit that 90 by night, you go to sleep, and your blood sugar level is going to be at a healthy level during sleep at night. And when you sleep at night is where you burn the most fat. Because remember that fat burning zone I talked about, where you're in between that 70 and 110. You'll be in that 70, you'll be between that 70 and 110 when you're in some good quality sleep. Mm -hmm. Right? So all of this... You can't exercise your way to a healthy weight either because the thing is, is that eventually you get tired you can't maintain it but you can chip, Burn out. chip away you can use exercise in order to increase lean muscle mass you can use exercise to burn ectopic fat stored inside muscle tissue you can use ectop you can use muscle to improve insulin sensitivity exercise to improve insulin sensitivity where if you eat after exercise what happens or resistance training your cells are much more receptive to taking in glucose post-workout. So your nervous system is highly activated and it activates all of the cells of your body to suck up that glucose, right? So you can use exercise as, as leverage to improve your metabolism. But the goal of the exercise is not to just brute force your way to a healthy way. That's, it's not how it works, right? Um, you don't burn enough fat in a workout you do as a matter of fact when you work out you mostly burn glucose what we call sugar you don't burn that much fat during a workout you actually burn more fat after the workout oh okay. remember, you, you got to create a blood sugar you got to create a blood sugar deficit not a caloric deficit you could do a workout and only burn like 204 and 200 to 400 calories or so right? right now the thing is is that one pound of fat is 3500 calories you're not going to be able to do no 3,500 calorie workout. You'll be nope. recovering from that one workout for the rest of the week. That workout <laughs> will do more harm than good, right? It'll break your body up doing that. So exercise is leverage to facilitate the improvement of a healthy metabolism. If you don't fix your metabolism, the, the weight loss stuff, it is going to be the biggest struggle of your entire life because right. you have to fix your metabolism first. That has to be priority number one. Good quality. Quality sleep will get you better. Will get you better weight loss than than intense workouts will. Period. Because of the blood sugar deficit the thing I just mentioned. So then, when people say, "Well, what about HIIT, high intensity interval training?" I lose a lot of weight when I do that. Yeah, <sighs> because you brute force your way into a steep blood sugar deficit. So you know that lightheadedness post workout. You know that feeling of lethargicness, and you're like, "Oh my God, that workout kept my album about to pass out." Oh, that's that low blood sugar state. Because this high intensity has burned through all of your stored glycogen that was in your lean muscle mass tissue and all that to the point where your blood sugar levels just crash hard and you're running on fumes. And so when you eat after that, all of your food is basically used to dig you out of that blood sugar deficit. But the thing is, is that, look, if you are 100 pounds overweight, you got back pain, you got knee pain. You're already low energy. You got anxiety and depression from poor sleep quality. Good luck doing all of that high intensity interval training on a consistent basis when you're already fatigued, exhausted, overweight, joint pain, and bad sleep quality. Good luck with that. Yeah, trying to maintain that and yeah. keep it up. Yeah. Now, if you and your earlier mid 20s, yeah, you could do that. But a lot. A lot of people I work with, they're 30, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60 years old. I'm not putting you know? them through these intense workouts to the point where they're like, yeah, you know, during the workout, I broke my leg or, you know, I tore my <laughs> meniscus or, right, you know, right. I, you know uh, uh, I got a, I got some type of inflammation in my hip, my slip the disc or what all of this type yeah. of stuff because I'm trying to get them to brute force their way to a healthy weight. It's you got to be more tactical when you have an older population. And nobody, yeah. I don't think the people in your audience or, you know, teenagers in the early 20s, right? We're all adults here, yeah. right? We pay taxes, we got jobs, 
If we, we got, got kids, bills. poor sleep quality, all type of bills, dealing with inflation and all of this type of stuff. It, it, it's a whole different ballgame. Right. And this is where it becomes stress management, then becomes the top priority. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that answers your question. I forgot who asked that. Um, okay, I'm going to ask these three questions in the box and then oh thank you real the real surreal shield said thank you so much nicole for bringing this to us you are so changing our lives for the better thank you dear it's all rimson it's all rimson <laughs> realtor for real i don't know if you're still in here penny said what are your thoughts on eating only fruit in the morning and vegetables etc in the evening uh in the afternoons and then what's the right way to eat is is food combining issues such a thing not, not that I've seen. I mean, you can interview, you, you can mix foods for, you know, fruits and stuff. That's fine. I mm -hmm. mean, I like to mix fruits. Um, some fruits I don't mix. So for example, um, you know, my first, well, no, my second meal today was just a, a, a honeydew melon. I didn't mix it with anything. It was just a whole big bowl. It was like eight cups of or whatever. It's just a whole honeydew. Right. Um, you don't even, necessarily need to eat green leafy vegetables a lot of people think you need to you don't really need to really but that's no, where you, you get don't. the minerals right no it's not no the, the fruit doesn't have all the minerals no, well that's, that's actually not true ah. um so basically because remember so the fruit nuts and seeds the nuts and the seeds are very mineral dense okay. it can even be more mineral dense than the greens right okay um now, I'm not telling people to not eat greens. I'm just saying it's not necessarily, you don't necessarily need to eat leafy greens. There's not a whole lot of a reason why you shouldn't, but it's not, necess but it's not necessary. Okay. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right? Interesting. Um, so, because when people come to me and they're like, I hate bitter greens and spinach and all of this type of stuff, right? Look, if that person hates it and it's a miserable experience for them to eat it, I'm probably not going to put it in their diet. But what I would do is put some herbal teas to compensate. What mm -hmm. I would do is add some more chia seeds or hemp seeds to compensate. I'd probably add more bell pepper, avocado, things like that to compensate. Okay. Personally, my general recommendation is, yeah, eat leafy greens. Because there's only a benefit from it, right? Well, all I'm saying is that it's not necessary. So if you, add, you know, if you absolutely struggle to eat greens, and that may not be a thing that you necessarily uh, want to do, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I learned this, too, because there are a lot of people who have allergies to cruciferous green vegetables. Really? Yeah, they have, they have allergies to it. They eat it, and then they have all type of digestive problems. Yeah. Like, like broccoli? Yeah, gas and bloating, constipation, all this type of stuff. It's rare, but for some people, it is the case. Well, gas, that's just part right? of eating the vegan diet. No. So, you know, when I, so with these people, they got me to really rethink how I approach nutrition, right? <laughs> because, well, if the green leafy vegetables are essential for the, for that, for the, well, they ain't never going to be healthy if that's true, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I've worked with people like that, and we've been able to reverse their food sensitivities and improve their health without even putting leafy greens in their plant. But oh, if it wow. was necessary, I wouldn't be able to have that kind of success with it. That's why I yeah. say that, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can eat, you can have a diet that's mo that's just straight up just fruit. You don't really necessarily have to eat any other food groups. You don't have to. I think you should. Fruit and you nuts. don't have to. Yeah, I would say fruit and nuts. You could just eat fruit and nuts all day. Right? Really? Um, I'm more of a diversity person, right? Mm -hmm. Because I like mm -hmm. a full spectrum approach. Yeah. You know, so you get your smoothie bowls, your greens, your nuts and seeds, things like that. Because then the thing is, what happens if you want to do a raw diet, but you have a nut allergy? Oh. Right? So we have to be, like, a little bit more diverse. So for people like that, if you have a nut allergy, just stick to seeds, legumes, um, and leafy greens. Perfect. Right? So you would do more of a high raw diet where you eat fruits all day, and then you have the one meal where you got the legumes in there. Mm -hmm. The seeds, the leafy greens, the diced bell pepper leeks, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, that you, sounds... you have to have a certain level of agility when it comes to your plan. Yeah, that's yeah. a nice balance right there. I like that example. Yeah. Okay, two last questions, and then we're going to bring it to a close because we're coming up on it's an hour and ten minutes. Um, so, um, 
I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, Abad Mofun, my own 32. <laughs> so tell us about your diet, please. And then the real Sheree Shill said, how do you fix your metabolism? What is the number one tip? So first, tell us about your diet. I don't know who they're talking to, me or you. So I'll say my diet and you'll say yours. And then say, what is the number one, number one way to fix your metabolism? For me, I eat a high raw diet currently. I would say the last year or so, but my body changes through seasons. Sometimes I want more cooked food. Sometimes I want all raw. Sometimes I want high raw, which is what I've been doing the last year. So I eat a lot of fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, salads, smoothies, nice cream, which is just frozen fruit blended up in a uh, blender. But if I, I mean a food processor, but um, if I want cooked meals, I might have beans, rice, and a vegetable. I might have stir fry vegetables over quinoa or over brown rice if i'm um and then sometimes i get naughty <laughs> and i have some bad stuff like some vegan pizza but i'll just put like marinara they'll they'll just do the marinara with veggies on it like olives and jalapenos and stuff but that's that's like the rare stuff um most of my diet is whole foods clean um high raw because it's a good balance for me. But if I want to have a little treat, I just do because I can. I'm, you know, I'm me and I can do whatever I want to do. You know? <laughs> okay, talk about your diet and then t say the, after you talk about your diet, tell the number one tip on how one can fix their metabolism. Sorry, uh, guys, uh, no more questions after that. We have to bring it to a close. If you guys want so more questions, uh, book a call with Remsen because he's a coach and he can help you. Yeah, so for me personally, um, I've been doing, uh, chocolate, I don't Chia pudding. Know, what should I call it? No, no, it's more like flax pudding. I've been doing like chocolate flax pudding with, with, mm. uh, sesame seed kernels and sliced bananas, right? Mm. right? So I'll get like two or three bananas in there. <clears throat> I'll do plant-based milk, four tablespoons of flax seeds two tablespoons of PB fit, two um, table, and PB fit is like powdered peanuts. Uh, oh, I just, bought some, I just bought some of that today. It's a lower calorie, lower fat uh, way of getting some peanuts in the right, system. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So <laughs> then I'll do two tablespoons of cacao powder, right? Cacao is amazing, by the way. Um, then I'll do, I'll do like a, like a couple tablespoons of either coconut sugar or raw sugar cane, a teaspoon of sea salt, um, and then I'll put a quarter, and, th and then I'll basically blend that up and I'll leave it in the fridge overnight. And then the morning after I'll put a quarter a cup of sesame seed kernels and then uh, a few uh, sliced bananas on top. And then the next meal after that will either be like a watermelon or a cantaloupe or a honeydew or some type of fruit bowl. Um, next meal after that will be like like a cup of nuts or something like that. And another, the next meal after that will be like another fruit bowl and then end the night with another cup of nuts. Um, <laughs> you nuts. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, my, I'm, I'm, I can always also change the format, right? So mm -hmm. it really depends. So sometimes I'll, I'll switch it up. I may have not have the smoothie bowl and just do like six bananas in the morning and then do, you know, two fruit bowls and then have like a meal with avocado uh, hemp seeds, sunflower seed kernels, uh, four cups of spinach, kale, spring mix, diced onion, bell pepper, nutritional yeast, cumin, curry, cayenne pepper, taco seasoning, coconut mm. aminos, and then shake it up, you know, mix everything in and then eat that, right? Um, avocado slices in there and that kind of thing. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that, that I would eat, you know, um, yeah, things change up periodically. It from changes, the changes up, you know. You yeah, might have yeah. some type of foods, but you just kind of, you know, shift it and change the yeah. vegetable, or change the bean, or change the nuts, or you know. But right. it all it boils down to what my goals are at the time as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are either of you having children? <laughs> I'm not, I'm 48 years old, about to be 49. I'm too old to have kids. And, and plus, I just don't want any. <laughs> what about you, Winston? <laughs> yeah, so uh, in the United States, no. Uh, what, having kids? I, 
I, I would be terrified to have kids in this country. <sighs> okay. Um, I heard that. I would have to leave the country and go to like Africa or something like that. I would have to go. <laughs> but you do want kids though? Just curious. Um, um, I'm I'm kind of agnostic on it. I'm not, I don't. So the so the thing is is that there's not really necessarily a good reason to have kids. That's the truth. People have kids for themselves. They don't do it for their kids. Right? You don't need to have kids. Um, if you, if you want to have kids, that's fine, right? But there's not. I've never heard anybody give me a good reason as to why they want kids. I'm like people do it because they feel like it because they want to have a family and they want to experience the child rearing thing and all of that. That's fine. Um, but just understand, there's a lot of risk that comes with that, right? Because you're raising kids in an extremely toxic country. Mm -hmm. um, that is deeply predatory towards children. Uh, and if you want to bring them into that and you want to risk it, that's fine. But just understand you are risking the well-being of a future child doing that. The food is, the, I mean, you know, they, they spray all types of toxins and stuff on the food. The media is toxic. We have a pornified culture. Um, I, you know, I, you got the white supremacy. So if you're bringing black kids into this country, uh, into, I mean, just understand they're going to be subjected to police harassment, all types of workplace discrimination, etc. They're going to have a lot to contend with. So, yeah. and child rearing is fun and all of that type of stuff. But I know for me personally, like if I have a daughter, that increases my chances of going to prison by at least 30%. Right. <laughs> um, so th there's that. So, okay, cool. I have a daughter. Chances are I'm probably going to do, I'm probably going to go to prison at some point in time for things that, somebody I, else? that I may be forced to do at some point <laughs> in defense of my family right no. so you know i mean even like yeah man getting married too like yeah you get married you're now whereas normally you may have not have necessarily had a good reason to be a particularly violent person um get guns things like that be willing to do certain things in the defense of your family right you your things the, the stakes are raised right so yeah, yeah to... these things Things are fun, but yeah, they do come at a cost. So for me, speaking as a man, right, these are the kind of things that I think about. Like, yeah, you if you're going to have a family, you better be prepared to protect your family and fall on your sword. You got to be right. you got to be willing to put yourself through hell to protect your family. And if you don't want to do that, don't have to go to another country. OK, yeah. real quick, Renton, we forgot. I forgot you forgot to answer the question. Uh, she said, don't forget about the metabolism question. Oh, uh, yeah. So the metabolism. number one tip on how to fix your metabolism, and then we'll bring it to a close. Yeah. Uh, metabolism. So best way to fix your metabolism. Um, if, I'm, if I want to give like a really straight answer, I'd probably say the best way that I've found fit to correct your metabolism is a raw vegan diet. That, that, I mean, that's been like the best thing, right? Yeah. A raw vegan fruit-based diet has been the best way. Okay. Not Actually, by the way, way. Be before I close on the kids thing, right? If you want to have kids and that's, and that's what you want to do, you have an obligation to get as healthy as possible before doing that because you pass on that RNA, that RNA and that chronic illness onto your kids. Mm -hmm. Right? So don't be, don't be looking to get pregnant and you obese and have all type of health issues. Right? So there is a certain level of responsibility and obligation, right? Because you're going to bring somebody new into the world. You're going to throw them into an extremely dangerous and toxic environment. And you want to give them as good of a start as you can possibly give them. So health, economic security, and as much of a safe environment as possible. So location, economic security, and your own personal health and well-being. And if you're a couple with your husband and wife y'all both have to be in the, in, the, in in the best health you can get into before having a kid because you got to do everything that you can to give your child the best start mm -hmm. so there is a certain level of, of personal responsibility that comes with that yeah that's all I'll, I'll say that. so get yourself together first before you that's bring right. another child into that's this right. world like i don't want to have a family like okay you got some work to do you gotta get, get it right Go yeah, have your right. kids. Well, thank you. And don't, don't have your kids out here and you and you you making your kids breakfast in the morning. You're giving them all of this eggs and sausage and bacon and butter up and all this type of stuff because childhood obesity is rampant in this country and it is deeply irresponsible to be feeding your kids garbage. 
Yes. I have every sovereignty in the house. It, it's got to be a family effort. Don't yeah. play around with that. Don't play because around with it. all of the stuff that they pass off as food in this country is is hot. It's poisonous. And Fact. the African African Americans, us melanated folks, we get in the worst of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, with all that environmental poisoning, food poisoning, you know, uh, injustice system. Put, uh, uh, I'm not going to go on the whole long tirade, but yeah. it, you got a lot to contend with. Yeah. So you can at least be more diligent about protecting your food. And taking care of yourself. Well, thank you so much on that note. Remsen, thank you as always. You always come down and break it down for us and, and just spitting them nuggets, things that we ain't ever heard in our lives. And, <laughs> and getting, a, getting a little intense and aggressive. <laughs> yeah, you know, but you got to do it. You got to do yeah. it. You got to spread the words because, you know, if we don't, we don't know. We... How else are we gonna find out? That's right. And no, no joke. <laughs> not, every, not everybody knows everything you know, Rimson. <laughs> but anyway, um, thank you again for all your wisdom and knowledge and sharing with us. Thank you guys that were here today and joining. I'll be posting this replay on my YouTube channel in a few days. Um, it will not be on Instagram, so I will not be putting the whole thing on here. So you can go to my YouTube click on the link click on the bell for notification so when i post it and you guys can watch it from the beginning and share it with some people who might need to hear some of this information you know um we all about spreading the the, the message of health and wellness and all that good stuff so thank you guys thank you Rimson. you have a wonderful sunday enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you in a few weeks <laughs> yeah 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 god bless you all, right, all. Y'all. Thank you, T Vegan. Thank you, Tamaya, and everybody else that were in Penny and and uh, Cherie Shields. I, I can't remember how to say it, but thank you all for your participation. Sorry, I couldn't get to everybody's questions, and some of y'all wasn't listening and being. Uh, I said put it in the question box. No. <laughs> anyway, God bless everybody, and I'll see you later. Bye, Winston. All right. Bye.